Hello, and welcome to the first free Linux training webinar offered by the Linux Foundation. My name is Craig Ross, and I'm the Community Relations Manager. And I'm pleased to introduce longtime kernel hacker and LWN.net editor, John Corbett, who will talking, uh, be talking about how to contribute to the Linux community. John? Thanks, Craig. Um, as you heard, my name is John, and I'm here to give a, an abbreviated version of my talk on participating in the Linux kernel development process in the development community. Given the time allowed, I'm not going to get much into the technical details, so this will be a talk suitable for developers, for managers, or for anybody else who is interested in how the process works. This talk comes out of several years of experience observing the kernel development community and how things work there, and noticing some people having a very difficult time with it. The truth of the matter is that working with the development community is not hard at all. But it does require an understanding of how, how the process works and how people expect things to go. It's kind of like traveling around the world to some city far away where they have developed their own ways of doing things for their own good reasons that you may not quite understand. So you go there and you don't realize that you are stepping on people's toes and you don't quite understand why people are getting irritated with you. Walking into an established development community can be very much the same thing. These communities have been functioning for years and have developed their ways of, of working, again, for very good reasons. And if you don't understand that, then you'll run into difficulties. Difficulties like the one illustrated here. The developer listed here, Khan Kalibas, is a very talented developer who came into the kernel community wanting to improve how things work, especially in the area of desktop interactivity. He produced a lot of very interesting code, had people interested in his work, but he had a very hard time actually getting that code into the kernel because he didn't really quite understand how the process worked and how to work with the community. The end result was that he threw up his hands and took his marbles and went home, posting this message in the process. This is the kind of thing that I really hope I can help to avoid in the future. In the kernel development community, we get contributions from literally thousands of programmers every year. Even so, we, we cannot afford to lose good people. We need all the help we can get. So if, if I can help in any way to avoid this kind of situation, then I will feel that I have succeeded with this talk. So I'm going to start by talking about why this is a concern at all. Why do we care about working with the kernel development community? There are several reasons for this, starting with the fact that the kernel is really the core of any Linux system out there. The kernel defines the basic parameters of how the system is going to work. If there's something that you need to do, the kernel even needs to support it or it's likely not going to work the way you want it to. If the kernel does not perform the way you need, then you're not going to be able to fix it in user space, and so on. So things simply have to be done at this level. A lot of things do. When you come to realizing that things need to be done, the way that you get them done is to actually go into the process, contribute your code, and drive things in that direction. The kernel is not something where you put in requests to some large company and hope that someday they get around to fixing things for you. In the kernel, as in any free software project, the way you exercise your influence is to contribute code to actually push things the way you want them to go. So this is the way you get the kernel that you want. Beyond that, any code that is outside of the mainline kernel that I call external or out of tree code tends to be very expensive code. The kernel moves very quickly, and a lot of the internal APIs tend to change quickly. Keeping code functioning and supporting it for users is much more expensive if that code is not actually in the mainline kernel tree. You end up always playing catch-up, trying to keep things current with whatever the kernel developers are doing. Once you get your code into the mainline kernel, this particular expense goes away, and your life gets a whole lot easier. Related to this is the fact that External code tends to be lower quality code. Every time we've seen a bunch of out of tree code suddenly get released and made available to the kernel development community, we have found all kinds of problems with that code, race conditions, security bugs, performance issues, duplicated functionality, and so on. It just always happens that way. When you're working without the benefit of the wider community, the, the code that you produce is going to be like this. So. If you keep your code outside of the development process, it is going to be worse code. And I've really just seen no exceptions to that anywhere. As soon as you bring it into the process, that code can improve. Things get uh, better in a real hurry. And one of the reasons for that is that once the code is in the mainline kernel,